Hello, hello. Welcome to the Eddie Conversation Podcast. My name is Eddie V. Hill, and I am your host. Uh, this is episode number 79, and joining me today is Amir Offtub. Yes. Woo! You got it. <laughs> nice. Welcome to the show, mister. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah, for nice sure. To be here. Okay, great. Uh, we are, this is this is the first episode. It's been a little, it took a little hiatus from the podcast. It's been a few months, um, and this will open up uh, 2023, so... What better way than bringing on on this guy here? You let me, let me uh, some little foundation building. Let me think about okay. What I normally do on this show is I'll go to the uh, the Instagram of the guest, and I'll see how one defines themselves through their bio. So let's look at okay. what you got here. This is in this order. You have yourself listed as post sound. Mm. Slash writing, yes. slash directing. Mm. You also mentioned Motion Picture Editors Guild, IATSE 700. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. And horror comedy Short Hungry is out now. <laughs> yes. So watch that short. We'll talk about that. I was a part of that one. We've made... Let's check it out. Yeah, we've made plenty of stuff together. Uh, so, okay. Regarding how this is how this is outlined, is this accurate to... How how did you decide the order of these things? Oh, so um, I guess um, and who are you? I'm yes. <laughs> well, it all started. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The order of it and what post sound writing directing. Um, I I guess I I put post sound first because um I get the most gigs through like through post sound. I have the most experience with post sound because um I I done it professionally you know with like full-time jobs um and then the writing directing um yeah i i don't get hired really to write or direct very often but um i would like to (laughs) so i think that's probably the, the it's maybe an order of like i don't know professional experience um but yeah Okay, so writing before directing, or is it just kind of like how those words flow is like writer-director is I th- one thing? Yeah, I, I think I've spent a lot more time writing um, than I have directing. Um, yeah, just because, write, I mean, writing, it's it's cheap and it's solitary and it's and it's just something I, I've done for a really long time. Um, and just in the past, I, I don't know, but three or three years or so, I started directing stuff more. Um, yeah. So okay. yeah. yeah. Great. Great. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Yes. Well, I was mostly thinking about like <clears throat> when we are, because I, when I've seen you directing, it's always been something that you've also written. But I also know that you've yeah you've written more. So uh, we'll get into those projects. I guess my question to start maybe i don't know okay, i'm just curious as to why you mentioned specific oh, okay you said post sound that's where you have the most work but i also know you do production sound too where you're on set yeah as yes. The, as yes. the as the guy miking miking up the act loving 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 miking whatever miking yeah. up the actors yeah i just, <laughs> i honestly i just say body mic i, I started saying body mic <laughs> <laughs> just because how does lavalier, that, how do you use lavalier. That in, how, do you, how do you use that in a sentence? Um, I'm going to put a body mic on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to love you up, but I'm going to put a body mic on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just mic you up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to body mic you yeah, up. No, I, I guess norm- yeah, normally on set I'll say, I'll ask, all right, or if when I'm 18 or whatever, it's like, are we going to love, are we loving them up? Or Right. Oh, as a verb. Up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But then it's hard to say those, that word loving is kind of yeah. hard. So I did, did I say Mikey? Oh, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Either so you're that guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I am. Um, Mixing and booming for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've never really had like a crew. It's always been, um, cause it, I mean, it, it, you're supposed to, you know, like on, you're supposed to have like a few guys doing it. Cause there's like, you know, there's the boom, there's the boom, you know, there's the boom guy, there's sure, the sound we'll explain, mixer. Yeah, explain to you. Yeah. So typically, <laughs> typically there's, um, 
it's broken up into a few roles, uh, production sound. Um, you have the sound mixer who's operating the uh, field recorder <clears throat> and adjusting all the levels. Um, and then you have the boom operator who's holding the boom pole and um, positioning it, you know. And then you also have the utility guy who is kind of like more of a floater position. Um, yeah, so if if, if you if a, a scene needs like a, a second boom mic, I guess that's where the utility guy would come in or, um, yeah. But Interesting. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a three-person sound team on a... I work on the baby sets, so... Yeah. In the indie world, you're lucky to get a boom to help you out. Yeah, um, I've all... All all the production sound I've done, it's just been me, um, and it is it it can be a little bit uh, challenging um, to be, especially if if it's a scene where you know you have like multiple actors and uh, you're just trying to follow the script, you know, you're trying to position the boom where it needs to go um, above the actor that has the line at that moment and then also checking your levels um it's 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 two jobs in one uh yeah so <laughs> yeah it's a lot that's a lot um good work out there yeah right <laughs> thanks <laughs> um all right so let's see i'm just gonna lay out a little bit of maybe where the conversation can be headed because i know i want to connect the dots we do want to hear we do want to hear about the origins of Amir, mm. how you got into mm. film, all, all those lovely stories, how <clears> you <throat> chose your route, um, all those kinds of things. I know you grew, you grew up in Santa Clarita. You're, you're kind of, you're LA, you're SoCal based. You've been here forever. Um, and then I do want to uh, talk a little bit about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I, I guess no. I, I'm I'm trying to figure out a way too, because uh, being that I did just spend, I came off of a feature in um, that I was first ading for 22 days. In, yeah, like, well, Tahoe. I would uh, I I would love to catch up because oh, sure. we, okay, <laughs> we haven't really. I mean, I've you know I saw the picture. I, I saw a lot of pictures, but um, yeah. I haven't okay. heard, heard from you. Well, okay, yeah. so yeah. Uh, the project, uh, should I say the project name? Should I, am, why, why am I asking the camera? I should be asking you. Okay. Um, yeah, every, yeah I, I posted about it for sure. It's called Weak Layers. Um, and I came on as, I was approached, it's like a whole, you know, I'm from Reno. So Lake Tahoe is right by Reno, so. I kind of just came on the project because I was a, you know, once upon a time local to that area and they needed somebody with experience that knew how to get the, get a local crew together for this team. It's not, not typically, you know, they're not local filmmakers. So, um, I came on the radar or whatever and uh, they approached me to be their first AD <sighs> and it was a doozy. So can I ask, um, sure. so the guys who, like the producers or the, the people who kind of helmed it, are they're from that area? So yeah, the there's like a main trio producing team okay. that the, were Lake Tahoe locals that had a lot of connections in the area. And that's kind of how it ended up in that space. But the writer, director, lead actor is Canadian. And she's from another mountainous region up there. That so she's ski culture to the core, and wanted to make this ski movie, this comedy, oh, ensemble wow. piece. Three three leading ladies and a whole ensemble cast of, you know, wacky characters and fun hijinks. So uh, that that's something I've never had the experience of uh, of seeing firsthand. Being on set for is a uh, lead actor and director combo that's uh yes. and writer because yeah. you wow. yeah it's yeah she had a co-writer um yeah katie burrell shout out uh gr she's got a quite the instagram following it was cool being up on the hill people on the hill would just literally recognize her from just walking around I was like, oh katie i love your stuff i was like oh hmm. she's famous nice. um that was cool 
okay, yeah. So for those that are familiar with filmmaking, if I say the following statements, you'll understand that you kind of know what you're getting into. This was, I knew, I knew it was going to be a tough, a tough shoot. So I don't know, we don't have to really jump too much into it. I don't know. Yeah, a writer, a director, actor, lead actor, like number one most lines in the call sheet or in the script is our director. Some for the bulk of the time, she's not at monitor being able to watch what we're shooting, which is a tough challenge. Is if you are going to jump into that space, ideally you have somebody, you know, some sort of trusted figure that knows the vision and can kind of help have your back while you're on camera. So there was that. Um, which was you? It was not me. Oh. <laughs> it was not me. It should have been you. Should have been me. <laughs> no, I had a lot. I had enough going on here. This was this was a lot to coordinate, and yeah, it would it would have been difficult to. I mean, that was something in the back of my mind that I was like, "Am I am I gonna be the guy? Am I gonna be the person?" It ended up being more so. She has a producing partner that was a part of the process from the beginning. Uh, Colleen, shout out. Um, that was the bulk of that role. The co-writer was also there, also uh, producing as well. So. She had the extra eyes, <clears throat> but man, it was a it was a it was a doozy because it was first time feature. So there's a lot of there was like a weird mixed bag of people with years to decades of experience, <laughs> and then people that have never worked with a crew larger than three people, or have never been on a set at all doing a department head job mm -hmm. that you kind of find in the, in the local sphere. So it was a lot to. That was a lot. That was a lot. And then it was ambitious, too, where you're like, there's some scenes where you have, you know, 50 background, 80 background. You're trying to also coordinate Whoa. while you're doing that. 80? And then there's stunts. And then there's Whoa. freezing cold temperatures. And, um... Wow. <laughs> uh, and, uh, man, did I do a good job. I'll tell you what. <laughs> no, I'm sure you did. I don't doubt it. It was, um, it was quite stressful. Wow, um, eighty background actors, and I mean, as the AD, that's a. Uh, is that a? I mean, are you the one directly managing all the background actors, or is did you have somebody so, helping you, or, or so, like a second AD? Or? Um, yeah, I don't think you have. You met? Have you met Jamie Keener? Yeah, yeah, it does she, she was helped on the thingy? Um, yeah. The yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, script supervisor on uh, your latest series. I don't know, what are you yeah. even calling it? It's not a series. Um, it's, a, it's not even an antho it's an anthology shorts. I don't know. Yeah, something like, yeah, anthology maybe. Yeah, so you I mean, they're, they're, they're like interconnected. Like, I've been calling them just three interconnected shorts. Uh, yeah. But they're meant to run in sequence. Yeah, it's a whole, we'll yeah. jump into that too. Yeah. So Jamie, Jamie and I helped... And worked on that. I was your assistant director, kind of warming up, getting my chops rewarmed up for this feature that I was about to jump on. Right. Jamie was script supervisor. Jamie came with me to be my second AD. Yeah. Um, shout whew. out Jamie. Yeah, shout out Jamie. She did a great job. Yeah. She was awesome. Um. So yeah, typically managing all those people in the background of scenes does fall on the assistant director to coordinate all that. It's not something I have a lot of experience with, so I was I was very nervous and scared because I'm, I you know I went and I bought I, <laughs> it was time I finally bought a megaphone like this was one oh, of those nice. megaphone AD shoots where I'm just like background action yeah. and action and everybody had to hear me so typically I'm in small rooms where everybody knows what's going on but this was a little bit different yeah wow uh That's so cool. so I was stressed but luckily. The producing team stepped up a lot to help coordinate those bigger days. Like they were coming out and facilitating mm. a lot of the background while I facilitated the first team and the crew and making sure all that was going on. So I stepped in where I needed to, but it didn't. Luckily, the weight of that didn't fall on top of me, which I thought it was going to. But luckily, it was pretty manageable from my mm. perspective. I just had to. The difficulty with them was it was volunteer based background. Okay. So these were people that were coming out to have a good time that had never been on the set before. Mm. So it was like, it was a little bit different. Um, we were just happy that they showed up at all because we needed people. 
and mm-hmm. we couldn't pay them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was it was tricky. It was a whole ooh ooh. <laughs> yeah. How long was there? Was did it vary? Or did was there like one big day where it was the eighty, or was we, had, we had a few of those days. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Throughout the weeks. Yeah. Some some on top of the thirty to fifty background or whatever it was also there was one stretch where we had three overnights in a row to end a week and wow party scene to end the week in this small house (laughs) so it was like an overnight with background in the cold at the end of a week wow yeah with people that were there to party and not there to make a movie Mm. that had never been on a set before for the most part so it was like, hey, everybody, chill. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Quiet. Cut. 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 Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That one stressed me out. Yeah. So that was a day. That was a night. But now I am here. I don't know. There's. Mm-hmm. The, I don't know. what. There, there's lots of cool little fun anecdotes we can we can catch up on at some point. But I bet. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a stretch. Yeah. Two weeks of pre-production, a week and a half of production into Thanksgiving break, into coming back for three weeks, and getting lots of snow, and yeah, just making sure everybody is, uh, you know, you, it's the job of the AD to just keep everything moving, keep everybody mm-hmm. on the same page, and what a job it was. What a job it was. Yeah. Well. But I'm, I'm happy to be back. I'm excited to jump into some creative stuff. And maybe maybe uh, jump into the director chair again because that's what cause that's again that's I don't know how it is I'm assuming it's similar for you when you when you're doing sound and doing um, everything else that you do which we can jump into as well yeah. uh, that kind of helps the creative tank get filled up and you summon the energy when it's time to make your thing like mm. that's, I don't know that's how it is for me it's like all right it's been fun watching you guys make your thing but now I think it's it's, I think it, I think I need my turn at it because right. I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of hungry, <laughs> segue. <laughs> um. Yes. Uh. I I think it is a, a similar thing for me. Um. I uh. One of the reasons I like doing other roles for other people. Well. <clears throat> um. You know. Sometimes I'll I'll. I'll like AD for Bo every once in a while, or I'll do you know production sound here or there, um, <clears throat> and uh, I just well I just love being I just lo- I love collaborating and just being part of the filmmaking process, and I like I think what's what's cool about doing a bunch of different stuff um, is kind of my personality anyway. But then doing that and then going to directing is. Um, it only like doing all that other stuff only helps me direct just because it gives me more knowledge about just every little step along the process. It, it, it informs me, um, even knowing stuff about post-production, it's like, well, I'm on set right now and post-production, you know, is, isn't going to be for, you know, maybe months, but, um, just knowing, uh, what I might need later on or what the editor might need later on or, what we can um, afford to uh, to not shoot, or um, yeah, stuff like that, like uh, like post sound con- considerations. Like you always hear the uh, the f- the phrase, "What is it? We'll fix it in post." But like, mm, if you act, if it's a, it's a joke phrase, by the way. Is. Nobody, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't don't use that seriously. You can only use it ironically. Right. Okay. Please do not use that <laughs> phrase. It's a, it's a joke phrase, but it's like just knowing um, if you know more about the post production process, you can be more informed about well what you actually can fix and what you can't, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, and then yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but um, yeah, and just also what's cool about being you all, I also like I try to observe other directors when I'm doing like production sound one of the things i like about production sound is <laughs> you're you're up in you're up in the action you know you're right there like in the actors you're right there with the actors and the director 
Um, You're like the closest one to the literal yeah, action. Like li- yeah, and so it's 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 a good place to be kind of like a sponge um, and just to like observe, you know, like what the director's doing or how he talks to the actors or how he talks to the DP. Um, and yeah, it's a good way to, it's a good role to be an observer with. Yeah. It's a good way to, it's, you're listening to everything. So. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just turn your boom towards the director's mouth. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. what am I just record on? it. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to get a little extra snippet <laughs> here. <laughs> this is for myself. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay. So let's, uh, before I jump into some more specificities in the filmmaker, uh, filmmaker process stuff that I love to talk about. Let's jump into, um, let's hear more about uh, you and your story. Now, there's a couple of different avenues I'll, I'll bring us back to potentially, but, or I don't know. Okay, let me, I'm going to think out loud here for a second and be like, all right, do, but before we jump into the past, do we want to outline a couple of projects you've worked on now, or do we want to start at the beginning and build back, build up to that. Or, um, <clears throat> we can talk about some of the lovely success of of Hungary. We can talk about mm. um, of this latest endeavor, and then maybe use that as a springboard to be like, all right, so why this? Yeah, I think I think that's good. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about like yeah the last two projects, and then okay. and then we can catapult into the past maybe so it takes us okay <clears throat> all right uh which all right so i okay um there's little event well by the time this comes out it'll have already have happened but hungry is the latest project that is currently released yes you can find that on youtube how do they find it on youtube um how are people <clears throat> finding this short <laughs> yeah that's a great question i um it just, I I don't really know. Me, my I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> but people, I mean, it's um. So what's the short about? It seems to be pretty doing pretty well. Um, the sh- okay, the short is about um, it's about a couple. Um, uh, <clears throat> and well, the young woman uh, who's in the couple, she uh, she suddenly gets this craving uh she suddenly gets really hungry all of a sudden for kind of like doesn't seem to be any apparent reason and um and that's kind of what it's about without giving anything away really um and it's just her kind of dealing with with, I'll, with this I'll, hunger I'll spoil you, it. You add <laughs> i will add if i may i guess yeah is she gets hungry and she tries to cure it with eating. So she like kind right. of binge eats the whole kitchen and it's not cured. Yeah. And that's when we step into act two of the short. Yes. It's it's always, and yeah. It, and it gets wacky and weird. Yes. It's scary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm always, Whenever I'm like explaining something, I'm, I'm always like so careful. I'm like, I don't want to give anything away. I don't want to. So I'm like, my explanations are always super vague. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Uh, it's tricky. Okay. It's like one or two too. sentences. <laughs> I've been doing that with Chama Days. Mm. As I'll mention, it's about a couple, and they're like trying to figure out if they're going to be yeah. dating after the weekend. And like we didn't mention any of the right. uh, other stuff that is actually going to pull people into the movie. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm working on it too. Yeah. So that's right. <laughs> there is other stuff to pitch. Um, but yeah, it's it's about that, and it it definitely goes uh, in a dark kind of direction. Um, <clears throat> And um, you know somebody, I don't know somebody asked me like, you know, what what is like the message you want to convey uh, from this short? And I was just like, I don't like. I started I started typing something up where I was like, oh yeah, this is like the meaning behind it is and everything. A, a YouTube comment? Um, no, it's for um, <clears throat> there's Night of the Shorts. Uh, okay, okay. <clears throat> they asked okay. me like, you know, they sent me some questionnaire. Um, they were like, what's what's the underlying message you're you're trying to convey, you know, with this work. And I was, I started typing up this like paragraph. I was like, Oh yeah, it's all like, you know, this, this meaning, you know, her trying to like liberate herself or, you know, get gain independence or something. But I, I just delete it. And I was just like, I'll just leave it up to, you know, the audience to decide kind of thing. 
Um, <laughs> because like n- what was really what's been really cool is and this has never happened to me before with like any creative stuff that I can remember is like just going through like scrolling through the YouTube comments and seeing like the conversations that people like some people are actually like debating about the short and like the meaning behind it and stuff I was like that's really freaking cool like that people are actually like putting thought into this um and have different interpretations of it um and I don't want to come in there and just like spoil that spoil this conversation yeah, well, with actually like, this, this is, is what this it's is about. my intention yeah so if you're not getting it you're wrong yeah because yeah honestly i'll be honest like when i write um i'm not super deliberate i kind of it's more of a stream of consciousness stuff a lot of the time and then i kind of put it all together um after but uh so yeah, I don't even know what the hell I'm writing about half the and, time. And then, anyway, and then so. you shoot it and you edit it and you put it out and you're like, I don't know what that was. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a blur, that was man. That's fun. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that rem- Okay, so hungry currently. Correct me if I'm wrong. You started. You put this on your own YouTube channel. Yes. And yeah, you did you, you had. You didn't really have content on there, like any, this hasn't been consistent or recent, right? Or this No, not really. I have like a couple of sh- like older shorts on there that I just kind of did like shop by myself or like with another friend or something, but, yeah. and then I just had some music stuff on there. Yeah. So you plop this and now, I don't know how long it's been since the release. Do you remember? I think it's middle of September. Okay. So it's been out for a few months. Yeah. And it's garnered 100,000 views. Yeah. Woo. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me, because this is, this is not, you said that you haven't dealt with this before, but you kind of have. Mm. You kind of have. Mm. And if you recall, there's another short film called Shy Guy. Oh, yes. <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> <laughs> and that was, I think, was this, was that the first one that we worked on together that you were, you were directing and you're like, uh, my, my parents had my mom's house or whatever. Yeah. And let's go shoot there. And we got a little ragtag group like we always do. Yeah, it was, yeah, the first one, me and you. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> it was the first one I wrote and directed that you, yeah. helped, you helped me on. Yeah. yeah, and I came on to kind of help get it produced and put all the pieces together and get the crew and the cast and put yeah. them. I was like, hey, do you want to, uh, Amir, do you like these people? And like, yeah, if they're going to come, I'm, I'll take them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I, I, I remember like... um the actor kind of interviews for that. And I was just, it was, it was it honestly came down to just like who can show up kind of thing. Um, but um, they did a great, I mean, they did a great job. Uh, yeah. So I guess before we talk about maybe that story a little bit, but uh, I recall, okay. Cause I, I plopped that one on my, inst- my, my Instagram <laughs> on my YouTube and that one is the one that blew up on my YouTube too. Like I think it's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like at eighty thousand views or something. Oh. And people I don't think they're they're probably having more in depth conversations on your current one because that's more people in a short amount of time versus this one was strung out. Yeah. Uh but it was similar stuff where people are like either like 100% relating to it or 100% confused. Right. And they're like, I don't get, what does the ending mean? And mm-hmm. what's up with the brother? And wait, what is, who is she? Yes. So Yeah, that one, I, I would say, definitely say Shy Guy was like um, a little more vague, like the story, uh, at least to me. And um, So how do you describe it? <clears throat> well, Shy Guy like originally was, I, it's supposed to be about, um, it's another one about a couple. So um, this couple visits um, uh, the bo- the boyfriend's childhood home um, for the first time together as a couple. And uh, <clears throat> there is this uh, thing that happened at the childhood home, uh, this old memory that uh, uh, he hasn't, the boyfriend hasn't shared with the girlfriend yet. And... Um, once he gets there, it starts kind of like uh, like sort of haunting him in a way, and he's reminded of it, and he's kind of debating whether to share it with her or not. Um, and that's pretty much what it's about. Um, it's about an old memory uh, and how to deal with it. And um, I think, you know, because it was, it was like, you know, one of my first time ever, one of my first shorts, it was like... Uh, 
trying to convey something that's so internal um, was definitely challenging. It it made a it made a lot of sense like written down, but like uh, I don't know. I think maybe that's why some people were confused by it, just because uh, maybe I didn't visually make it apparent enough or something. I don't don't know. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I just think it's, it's, you enjoy maybe even subconsciously leaving the audience a little bit in the dark. Yeah, that too. You're like, you, you enjoy the mystery of kind of figure it out. And what, what is your brain piece together? Like, you know what you have going on and you summon these visions, but leaving them a little bit, separated is seems like seems like something you enjoy doing you're like yeah definitely yeah <clears throat> i i like uh uh i don't know I, I like watching movies that leave a little bit of um room for the audience to like engage with their imagination a little bit um yeah yeah <clears throat> so that one, okay, I was thinking about a couple of things. That one, the the, the fun aspect for me watching it, because it's, it's, I don't know, it's fun working with people that do stuff that's different than you. Like, that's not something, mm, that you make yeah. stuff that I'm just like, I would never come up with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to really direct this kind of stuff, but that's why it's cool. Like, all right, well, that's why it's your thing and not my thing, because you got to have your own individual takes and tones and all that stuff i was thinking about the aspect that you do in shy guy where it's you have the internal you hear the internal thoughts throughout Mm. the piece like the the son comes home and they're having the interaction with the father and he's thinking things and i think who do we we hear all three of them or is it just him and the dad um if you're i don't know it's it's just uh i know it's just him and the the dad yeah. yeah So both him and the, both the son and the dad um, have an inner monologue that we hear. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, which is kind of interesting in terms of like perspective choice. It's like, mm. are we are we coming to the house with her or are we coming with him? Right. Whose head are we in? And we're, yeah. We're, we're, we're kind of like we're, we were with him. I think is is my re- is how I remember it. But. Yeah. I mean, Brendan is <clears throat> supposed to be like the the main character in it um but uh yeah there is that scene in the kitchen where it switches almost to kind of the dad's perspective observing the couple um yeah and i'm just thinking about a lot of youtube comments about the like nagging girlfriend thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had morgan deliver kind of a sort of a, a i guess it's some people were like thinking it was kind of a mean line um I forget what she says exactly. It was like, oh, uh, <laughs> something like you always do this or something like that. I, I forget, but um, <laughs> she's like, "Are we gonna go inside or what?" Like, are you? And she just kind of, <laughs> I don't know who directed that, but I know right? specific choices to <laughs> antagonize on. the audience. <laughs> uh, okay, uh. so I guess okay. So that was one of the one of our first collaborations. And then jumping into Hungary, uh, do you remember what, or uh, I don't know, how do you, how do you know what you want to make and do next and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so, um, this is good question. I mean, Hungary took a, Hungary took a while, um, I wrote, I wrote it in, I wrote it in a writing class and, um, had, I kind of sat on it for, for a while and, um. Um, that's a good question. How do I, how do I know? What's the question? How do I know what, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to work on next kind of thing? Yeah, how do you, yeah, it's, how, where do you put your energy and time and, and right. what inspires you to make it? Like, what's the, what's the, yeah, what's the thing? Yeah. Um, wow. That's, that's, that's a good question. I, I guess it's, I just find myself just kind of thrown and <laughs> or just kind of like uh it's a it's t- totally emotional i guess <laughs> it's like completely emotional it's like 
you know, if something gets me really excited, um, I just I feel like the desire to make it. And if uh, if it seems, um, I guess the, the if it seems like plausible, like we can pull it, like we can pull it off. Like um, a lot of time, it'll it'll. I write I write a bunch of stuff, you know, just all just for fun, and I I, I won't know exactly whether it's going to get made or not, but um. You know, a lot of time it'll it'll start just with a conversation with somebody on set, or like conversation with you, or with you know, like with like a DP or something, and we'll just be like, hey, you know, you you got anything, kind of thing, and 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 I'll bring it up, and I'll through conversation kind of figure out like, okay, is this is I don't know, is this doable, or yeah, like, am I excited about this pitch at all? It's like, oh, yeah, no, I kind of do want to. Yeah, are you filming the? Are we both filming this right now? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, I. I'm very much like a a so, social creative person, I guess. So like, I, I really, the collaboration gets me really excited. So if I can get somebody else like excited about the idea, like, it really like motivates me. Um. Uh. So, yeah. So let's say when when Hungry was being developed, did you have how many other? It's just I guess for reference sake or what I don't know what word I'm looking for. <laughs> how many projects did you have on your on your desk when you oh. picked up Hungry? Like, did you have? Yeah. yeah. I think quite a few. Probably uh, like scripts that were actually done. Probably I don't know. Probably like five or six. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Cuz I am very much like a one one at a time person like I have mm. one script. Yeah. <laughs> I have one well I guess there's different stages. I do I have a lot of scripts now, but in terms of like shorts, I'm like, "Oh, I want to make a short." I have no scripts, so I have to write one right now. Yeah. So I I don't so it's kind of I don't know, there's something nice about I don't know how you do it, but writing without the idea of even making the thing. Like, I don't know. Mm, yeah. That's not really a question there, but. It's, um, <clears throat> yeah, sometimes I'll just, I'll, I'll just get like, uh, just kind of inspired to just write something. But a lot of the time it'll be, I'll, I'll just be watching a movie and I'll be like, it'll inspire me to write something or be like, oh, I would, I would like to write something kind of that makes me feel like this or, uh, or I'll just get a random idea from somebody or something I hear, or and I'll just start writing it. But <clears throat> I think like the pract the practical brain doesn't start kicking in until a little later. Sometimes for me, um, where I'm like, okay, um, I need to write this all in in a practical, more of a practical way, like um, something that's actually doable. Like I, I can't write, <clears throat> so. I get myself in trouble in, in this way a lot of the mm. time, and I'm trying to be better about it because I think I, I can be more of a productive filmmaker. I very much like uh, I was in a writing class, and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write a feature uh, by the end of the semester," and um, and I I did, but like, uh, <laughs> but it was it, there were maybe I don't know twelve or thirteen different locations, and there's you know, cast of like, you know, I don't know, 11 or 12 at least and a lot of special effects stuff and and I, I just, I I tried to write it so fast because I just, I wanted to get it done by the end of the semester that I, I didn't really sit down and be like, okay, like what's, come up with a plan, like, okay, what can I actually pull off, like after the writing, like to actually get it made. So I'm trying to get better about not just, just having the writer brain and having writer brain with producer brain kind of mm -hmm. um yeah because it's you can just get more stuff done that way i think yeah i guess it depends on what the objectives are right like mm -hmm. sometimes the objective is i want to be a writer and i need to showcase the the best of the best work and i need the the story beats to hit and I need this character to have this growth. So in, in yeah. introducing this element and this element is kind of the objective. So that way you can put out that script and get picked up for by a literary agent and then yeah. get hired to write more. But if the objective is to produce stuff and be the director, then yeah, that's 
kind of the route we have yeah. to fall back into for sure is how what do I actually have access to? What's my capability right now? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So moving forward out of Hungry and Shy Guy, let's talk a little bit about your latest project. Um, I'm curious to hear about uh, what the current plan of attack is. I know this was one of those situations where Amir and I... <laughs> I feel like this one was in talks for a while. Like it was a little bit, a little bit like little whispers over time of like, I have this idea for like this food night and I want to showcase some short films while people eat food and I want multiple shorts. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. When's that happening? I don't know. We'll see. And then finally it came <laughs> to <laughs> like Halloween was coming up or whatever. And yeah. you're like, I want this done by Halloween. Yeah. In time for Halloween. So that was yes. kind of the, um, that was the fire that got lit. Yeah. Is if you want your, if you want to light a fire, you come to Eddie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I say three shorts in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> How many scripts do you have? One and a half scripts of the three that you want to make right now. Okay. Yeah. But it was, we yeah, had one of those where it was, you're almost in more in my situation where I want to make something and mm-hmm. I don't have the script. Exactly. Yeah. Um Yeah, that was that was really cool. Uh <clears throat> it was uh so yeah, um I had I had, had this I came with had this idea for to do like a dinner thing, like you were just saying, like a, yeah. like a dinner show thing, I mean like years ago and it was always just kind of this like vague thing. I was like it it'd be really cool just to like, you know, I I always thought like, it'd be cool to, um, uh, to be watching a movie and to be like eating like what the characters are eating in the movie and, um, to like, you know, be eating along with them, like kind of an interactive thing or whatever. Um, but, um, I don't know. It was, it was just like this kind of far, it always seemed like this on far fetched idea just cause it's like, well, you have to like get good at making movies to do that but you also need to like be good at making food to do that so it's like (laughs) it's hard enough just to get good at one thing um let alone two things and um so it i don't know it took a while just to uh kind of figure out like my way into it and um yeah uh i i i guess I had I had written enough stuff to where I was, and I had been on set enough to where I I just had and finally had enough confidence to be like, I think we can I think I can finally do this like uh, and um, yeah so yeah we we did it three three <laughs> three shorts we shot it in two days and um, yeah now it's it's in post right now uh, and. Yeah, we could talk talk about like oh, what were we gonna say? <laughs> I was gonna say we could we could talk talk about what's next, like for for the release and stuff. I haven't really yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah, because the initial intention was having it done sooner to have the dinner event. So I'm assuming yeah. Is so yeah, is the plan pseudo the same still? Like yeah, do you have a okay, okay. people look forward to coming to some sort of event soon? Or yeah, what's totally. So I mean, originally. It was like, okay, I want to get this done by Halloween. Um, I actually want it to be like, have the dinner event and the premiere done by Halloween. But it it got to the point where I was just like, ru- I was rushing so much through the post-production to where it was like, it. I was like, okay. <laughs> that would have been like a two-week turnaround on three short films, right? Essentially, yeah. kind of, was the timeline. Yeah. Which is maybe a little bit longer. Either way, it was weeks, less than a month to finish three shorts yeah and um it just wasn't uh i i just felt like i needed more time in post i i really wanted to take the care that i took on what i learned with hungry is like what i really liked about that movie and i think one of the reasons it's it people are enjoying it is because i i when i put that movie out i was like okay i did everything i could I did. I, I left it all like on a, on the table with that movie, um, and that was a really good feeling. 
And uh, I wanted to get that same feeling again for this because, you know, we had gone through so much trouble to shoot it. And I was like, I'm not going to half-ass the post-production stuff. Um, so I want to do everything I can, you know, to make it as, as yeah, all the little you, details and make it really good. Can you talk about a little bit about those little details on on yeah. what what new elements you're or what new carry put into Hungary that inspired you to continue that on? Yeah. Um <clears throat> Um, I mean, coming from a sound background, uh, a big part of it is um, the sound design uh, and just doing all of the sound effects from scratch. Um, unless, I mean, unless I find something really good in a library that I just can't live without. Um, I, I try to do all the sound effects from scratch, all the ambiences and everything, and, um, and uh, just get everything sounding really good i mean you know there there was a scene in hungary where i mean the very the opening scene it's, it was really windy it was an exterior shot and it was really windy and i mean that took a lot that took a while just to get the dialogue to not sound like you know super muffled um and so it was a lot of cleanup and editing <clears throat> and then once i got all the cleanup and editing done then came the uh you know the sound design which uh yeah, it took a while. It's it's really fun to do, but I mean, just to get all the little like details of like the, the munching of the food and like the, you know, all all those little things. Like it's. Uh, I I clicked on it today again just to prep for this, and I had my headphones on. <laughs> it's so <laughs> disturbing. It just opens up over black with font with the title, and you just have like this almost ASMR experience yeah. of people <laughs> chewing in your ear. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm like that's a great way to start. Like that's what people are wanting. That's what they want is the yeah. good sound. That just that's not very pleasing to the to the ear. Yeah, it. it I mean, it kind of sets up like the rest of the movie because it's like, it's there are parts of it where it's like this is not uncomfortable to watch, but like it's uh, I don't know, it's just kind of dark and a little. A little creepy at times. Um, something disturbing. There's something. There's yeah. something happening. Yeah. Like a little squeamy. Yeah. Squeamy is that a word? Yeah, and I, I know, I was, I was, <laughs> I was always drawn to that because I, I really like, you know, like I like horror movies and I, but I also like food and, I don't know. I, I had a, uh, I was like, um, what was I going to say? So I was always drawn to kind of, um not a disturbing food experience, but like, <laughs> I don't know. There's something about it where it's food can be kind of scary or creepy to me. And, um, also like, I always had this idea where I was like, okay, I want to make food where <laughs> it looks really like weird, but then when you eat it, it tastes really good. Like I was, <laughs> anyway, um <laughs> anyway so yeah I, I won't get off on a tangent about that oh, but um that's great. That's... uh anyway yeah so the little details that's like a, that's a tangent we all want okay <laughs> that's great <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. that's a great tangent uh -huh. yeah um that yeah, never I, I, accomplishes I, I, the question um no not yet but um i'm i'm hoping to yeah it's coming okay. so it's coming yeah it's it's just like the experience of like Eating food and being scared at the same time. So you want you want at the end of the at the end of the immersive hungry dinner experience, people are being given the meat pies at the end of the dinner, right? That's kind of the idea. It's yeah, like there's a finger sticking out of it. Exactly. And yeah. I have to eat this now. Ugh. Oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's like I always call I call it like I always call it horror food, um, and. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I know, and it's a weird idea, but I, I there's something about it that really always attracted me, and um, it's coming. But um, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the little details, like the sound design, really add to kind of that that fe that feeling. I I want the audience to feel a little bit, and um, uh, yeah. So. I mean, that makes sense, being that you come from a sound background, that that's where the additional energy would go, because you understand the world, and you understand the capabilities of it, and you, you, you've, I'm sure you've been in, I don't know, have you, you've been in 
other bigger sound mix rooms where you get to see other mixers at work and all that where it's like all right well i didn't know i could use sound in this way and you kind of learn some tricks mm-hmm. along the implement that yourself especially if yeah. you're doing the indie style and you know the tricks then it's uh you're getting some high quality action for your own time and energy which is nice because i mean affording sound sound designers and doing yeah. a lot of sound from scratch putting that on somebody else that's kind of that's a expensive process yeah <clears throat> yeah totally like uh um I think my uh, I don't know. my my goal is to is it's to make movies and and direct and all that stuff and um but the the what I really like about doing um post sound uh, as a day job is uh, is when I go to when I end up directing something like I can use my day job skills for my you know passion projects and stuff like that um, yeah hundred percent. That's lovely. I wish I knew how to do it. Because <laughs> I feel like my stuff lacks in sound for sure. I'm like, oh no! I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. Can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's great. Uh, Alright, so uh, we didn't quite answer or talk about the plans. Alright, so um, mm. we, did, we didn't... Okay, I don't know how much... I don't even know what we've said so far. You have three short films in yeah. post production, and you're putting that additional time and energy because uh, it's you want it to be good. Yeah, ex- exactly. So That's like, yeah, off. the original plans get it done, get everything out by Halloween, but had to adjust it to honestly just just to get it where I I, I want it to be. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so working on it now and. The plan is to uh, find a restaurant where we can throw the event at and premiere it and um, serve some some food, some awesome food with it. And uh, yeah, uh, that's the plan. So that's coming soon and uh, details to come. Okay, great. Uh, I'll ask some kind of pseudo vague questions here just to kind of close off this chapter of the short film saga. Mm. What um, what lessons are you taking away from this latest experience with whether it's whether it came from being the director on set <laughs> doing three short films over two days? <laughs> full 12 hour days with this another ragtag group of awesome people that were super down and dedicated so, a lot of energy and time s- such an awesome crew um so lessons pulled from that maybe question mark slash new things that are coming up in post that are, you're like all right well that'll inform the next one too because that it's always a, a thing but what comes to mind when um <clears throat> Um, yeah, I guess like during production for this one, well, I definitely learned a lot in pre-production. I learned a lot in production and, and post, um, let's start from the beginning. Yeah. So pre, what lessons there? Yeah. Pre, (laughs) pre pre-production, you know, it was funny because, um, it was such like, I was in such a rush to write the scripts that you know i mean i was sending stuff that <laughs> i i was sending like updated versions of the scripts you know like i don't know like a few days before uh I mean, that's that's common for the in day. indie yeah. world no matter what mm. it's as a script supervisor it's super frustrating it's like yeah. i did my breakdown on your other script yeah <laughs> what's changed in this uh right but yeah but yeah so but it's not uncommon you're making tweaks and you're finessing because yeah you know it's something i really learned in, in pre-production I, I I think the uh maybe the most important lesson that I learned was um a process which is uh it was the the walk, it was during the walkthrough like how to have a very like a very productive walkthrough um where basically we we had a walkthrough and me as in oh so so me the uh director um 
Eddie, who was AD and producer on it, and um, and then I believe Haley was Haley was there with us, right? Yeah, Haley yeah. the D, the DP, and I think Julian was Julian there. I'm pretty sure. Julian yeah, was and then there Julian, too. yeah, Julian, um, the first AC was there. Um, so yeah, those were the players uh, at the walkthrough, and the lesson I learned was um, to just. I mean, I, I'm sure this is probably standard, but just like coming up with the shot list with, with that crew and just coming up with like, just, sp- I mean, we spent, I don't know how long we spent on that walkthrough. It was like. It's like half a day maybe. Yeah. Or, yeah it was long, but. Up, it was like, a, we should probably eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thing that happened. Yeah. Totally. It, it, but it was, it was worth it. It was so worth it because when, when the day came for, to actually shoot it like I, I feel like that was the only way we would have been able to pull it off in because <laughs> if we if we if we hadn't i mean we had like <clears throat> very specific like a, sp- a specific shot list and um and, and then you came up with, with with a great schedule for all of it and, and since we were shooting three shorts there was um some block scheduling that we did to where we we had uh we had shared locations among different shorts. So we were like, okay, let's <laughs> let's just knock these out while we're in this location. Um, yeah, shared location, overlapping cast, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but I, th- I think, yeah, the most important lesson I learned was, man, make that walkthrough count. Make it count. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that that is called fix it in pre. Yes. <laughs> Fix it in pre, one hundred percent. I didn't. I did not expect going that day that we were going to spend that amount of time. But thankfully, uh, it was kind of like almost Haley's idea, or it was somebody. I think Haley was pushing us to like. So what's the blocking here? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Like, right, I guess I guess we're doing it, guys. So do we have time? All right, we're doing okay. That's a really good point. Um, that helped me so much on the day because, um. I, I I think it, it, with Hungary that was probably something I that was probably like a big missing piece on Hungary, um, which was the, the short before these ones, which was <clears throat> uh, I knew what the shot lists were and I knew what the script was, but I didn't really like sit down and go through like plan out all the blocking in my head. So plan, uh, going through the shot list and the blocking during the walkthrough really helped me a lot to have confidence in talking with the actors and you know like because if you if you have the blocking down in your head as the director like you can focus more on like the emotional kind of direction with the with the actors uh you don't have to worry about like the logistics of like the technical aspects yeah exactly um and that was it's a huge relief when you can do that and it's it makes it a lot more enjoyable like i think where you're not like in your head like okay well he can do this maybe he can do this maybe like you want to be able to like give them like the technical notes pretty quickly and yeah come to come to the table with a plan it doesn't have to be the plan you end up with but like this is a starting point for us Right. How do you feel about sitting there? Okay, I was thinking you'd come in the room. All right, let's let's rehearse that. Okay, like versus like um, uh, yeah, (laughs) yeah, totally. It's it's a lot of it's just a confidence thing. It's like even if the plan changes, like just to have the confidence to give the actor an answer, like just be like, hey, like this is this is what I had in mind for the blocking. If they're like, oh, maybe I do this, maybe I do this, like you can consider it, like you know, changing it, but um. Yeah, I don't know if that makes That's sense. That's a great takeaway. That's lovely. Yeah. Good okay. call. I almost cool. forgot we did that. <laughs> but no, 100%. Yeah, two days, three short films overlapping. Like, it was a tight schedule, and there's no way we could have spent that time doing that on the day. So, okay, that's pre- yeah. that's a pre- that's the biggest pre-production lesson. Anything else you're yeah. thinking about before we move to production? No, I think that was the main one. Okay, yeah. and then now we're on set making the thing. Yeah. What the... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, make sure, tell your neighbors, don't tell your neighbors to fuck off when they come bothering no, just, uh, let's see, um, production. Oh, uh, I think a lot of it was, hmm. 
Hmm. I have a thought. Yeah. I remember you talking to, I don't know, this has kind of been a theme that you like to pick my brain on it sometimes. Hmm. We are like, Eddie, how do you keep up the energy oh, yeah. over it? Because this yeah. was, being that, again, you had rushed, you, there was a lot of prep going into this. There's, you're doing tons of stuff. You're getting t-shirts printed. You're prepping props and you're buying stuff and you're ordering things and yeah. all these things. And on the day, you're expected to be at 100% energy capacity creativ- creatively yeah. to be answering to actors and to your DP and, and to me. It's like, all right, what are we doing here? You got to have the answer. Yeah. Um, but that, that I remember you asking me after we wrapped. So maybe... Pre- yep. Yeah, that's uh, totally... Um, so pretty much what I learned, <laughs> well, my question was how, once you hit hour 10, how do you keep, how do you stay focused as a director? Like, how do you not uh, start fading? Um, because that, honestly, I would say, like, once you hit hour 10, that's when you need to be maybe the most energetic. Because, <laughs> like, everyone's kind of looking to you to kind of get through this thing, you know? Um, and uh, <clears throat> I, my question for Eddie was, how do you, how do you do it? Because um, uh, you seem to have just kind of like <laughs> limitless energy sometimes. And, uh, you know, a lot of time I'll, I'll start to get tired and I'll, I'll have to kind of try to catch my second wind or something. So I guess my question for you was, is that like a skill? Is that a muscle? Me- is that like something you build up over time, or is it like a a strategy? Like you know, like well, how I'll do you do that? So the question, <laughs> question for you before I try to answer that question. But um, any th- anything looking back on your own prep for those days that you think about, like I could have maybe. Like, you you know how, you know when you're energetic and you know how, what keeps you going. So, was there anything that you messed up with in your prep to oh. keep the energy? Or did you, have you done enough? Have you processed that yet? Hmm. I'm like, um, oh, I did stay up till 2 a.m. the day before we, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, little stuff like that. Yeah, may, I mean, maybe I could have gotten better sleep. <laughs> 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 that probably would have helped or yeah i mean you were saying like like, like diet and sleep is important yeah sleep is number one yeah it's i swear <laughs> yeah, i swear every time i'm working with a uh i mean it, it's kind of like a personal ambition of mine to i want to be the most aware person on set mm-hmm. like that's kind of just a personal goal mm-hmm. as a script supervisor as an ad as a director it doesn't matter what position i'm in i want to be as in it and capable of my brain being just aware of everything and being ready to go then as, as as anybody on set so i know i put a lot of thought into like oh we wrapped and these people want to hang out and grab a drink or whatever and i'm kind of like I gotta, I gotta go sleep, guys. I'm tired. Yeah. I need my energy for on set, not for after set. Yeah. So I, I kind of mm-hmm. say no to some stuff like that. Like on this, on this 22 day shoot, I swear I was the most. Again, I did good with that, and that was lovely. Even the overnights, I prepped very hard to be ready for the overnights. And that's just experience too. It's like I've done overnights before, so I know what didn't work last time or. Going mm-hmm. from an overnight schedule into 6 a.m. start two days later. Like, that's a whole other reset to be ready for the Monday. Right. And then ha- half the people on set are dead. And I'm over here like, are we, I, I, we got we got to keep moving, guys. Like, you go over here. Where's the camera? What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> but, um. Yeah. Um, sleep is number th- one. Oh. Yeah. No, I mean, I think what weird. might have helped me. <laughs> would have been not wait, <laughs> not like waiting because I was doing all the I was doing all the prop stuff. Uh, we didn't we didn't have like a prop person or anything or really an art department for this one. So that kind of I mean that fell on me and I think 
having to scramble in the morning and do all that stuff probably sucked a bunch of energy out of me. Um, so either do that ahead of time or <laughs> do you find, remember, find Do you remember somebody. what we did the morning between the two days oh, of yeah. filming? Oh, yeah, and that too, yeah. Uh, that was funny. I do. So Amir had this great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I swear this came up the day before we're going to shoot too, which is why we didn't have time and pre to do it. Cause you're like, Hey Eddie, I want to add this shot. Yeah. Classic director. Mm-hmm. I envision three mounds of dirt outside the house. I'm like, we got to <laughs> dig this dirt, sir. Somebody's got to like, that's us. Yeah. Like I'll help you. And I remember that morning I knew you were tired and I want to help save your energy too, but I, I couldn't do it by myself. Mm-hmm. So I remember, I don't know, I feel like I, t- I did like maybe 60, 40 on the work. Yeah, you definitely did more than I did. <laughs> I was like, get inside, go get ready, because I need you later. Yeah. Don't die. <laughs> yeah. Don't die here digging these holes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know what lessons are there. I don't know, just sleep and just keep doing it too. Like... That's kind of it. It's like, all right, I. <sighs> the anticipation of knowing you're going to be tired later helps you m- manage the energy throughout the day too. So a lot of new time, the first time directors, that's always my biggest worry on this week. Layers Tahoe movie is like, oh, I don't know when the last time is that I worked with a writer, sorry, a director, actor. I've done it before. I couldn't even recall when the last time was but we're doing 22 days and it's one thing being dead behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Imagine being dead in a comedy mm-hmm. in front of the camera mm-hmm. too. Wow. Yeah. Doing, you know, six weeks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jeez. Uh, that... <laughs> so wow. I was kind of my biggest worry is like, well, we need to keep the, I need to, we got to do our best to finish early. You know, we got to just give her all the reset time that she can get. But yeah. she was definitely, um, Falling into those spaces sometimes too, where uh, additional work was needed after we wrapped and before, and you could see the, you could see the the end of the marathon was coming, and you're like, is she gonna make it? Come on, Katie, wow. you can do it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure on, on the next one. That's the challenge, right? It's like I want more energy in hour 11 and 12 than I did last time. And then that'll yeah. be a little bit more mentally, mental prep going in is don't exert so much at hour two and three because I right. need it later. Yeah, for sure. Maybe, I think, I don't know if I do this, but maybe sometimes I, I try to, I'm a little bit like, try to do too much or something. I don't know. I that's a little something, but that's kind of comes Maybe. with the territory a little bit too. Yeah. Because when we're trying to make our own stuff, we have to do extra work. Yeah. But I guess it's more about, again, similar to the prep that we did for the blocking and the shot listing and stuff to prep you as the director. Mm-hmm. There's that similar prep too. It's like, as long as I know I'm going to be rushing to get this prop ready and stuff, as long as you know it's coming, yeah, that can take some of the energy off. And you're like, I just have to execute, which is different than feeling like you're scrambling right so but that's that's uh, i'm just thinking about making my first feature film it's what's on the inside Mm -hmm. and every time after we wrapped on the day i'd have to go buy props or go buy this thing at target or there was always something i had to do after because it was such a tiny crew right and i was like oh this is i'm like i just got to get it done as quick as possible because i got to get my sleep but yeah that was that balance and it was crazy yeah (laughs) okay (laughs) i bet man okay um yeah so yeah that was my production lesson okay and i know i don't we don't have to jump into post-production we talked a little bit about it already Mm -hmm. with you're just trying to you're you're like it needs more time yeah yeah so it's taking time uh, let me look at our time here oh we're doing good we're doing good you want to see the time? No, you can't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we don't have much time left. Mm. So I'll jump to some sound questions. Okay. If I may pick your sure. brain. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, jeez. Oh, because it burps. When we're talking about when we're on set, we as a director, when we as directors are on set and we have the luxury of having somebody do our sound for us and they're they're here and they're doing our thing, or when you're doing sound for somebody else, there's always these questions of um, how do we know how do how do you know if the sound is working? <laughs> oh, like do we have it? Is that is that airplane really gonna mess up this take? Or can we shoot? Do we need to do this take again? Like sometimes yeah. they'll, they'll come to you and we'll be like, "Was that good?" Or right. can we move on? Like, yeah. How do how do how does that work? How, right. So um. <clears throat> well, I, I would say the first thing as the sound guy just. Obviously, you just you know listen closely on the headphones is the obvious thing. Um, if if the sound was during a line, um, then you know it, it could be a lot more problematic than if it's just in between lines or uh, you know during a shot where there's not a lot of dialogue. Because um, usually the problem is I don't want all these ambient noises like overlapping with the dialogue tracks uh, because then you have to try to separate it out and there's a lot of problems too when you start cutting you know between the coverages uh, you'll you'll have you know a, a lawnmower over this dialogue and then you'll have no lawnmower over that one and it's it's really jarring when when you make the cut um, <clears throat> but I would say like um, a good maybe a good tip I could give is like um, <clears throat> just a maybe kind of know like uh how bad is this airplane how bad is this lawnmower like in terms of uh how yeah, fixable like it is or not is like um <clears throat> okay if it's <laughs> if if the frequency of the sound is in if it's in the range of dialogue um then it's more difficult to fix and post. So like um if it's for example if it's a really bassy like let's say let's say there's like a rave going on like next door or something and or some guys driving by with his car and he's bumping the bass or something right in the middle of your dialogue. And it's a great take and you're like ah you know we got to move on. <clears throat> if it's if it's really low frequency um, it's easy for like the, uh, you know, the, pro the algorithms or whatever to grab, to pull that out and to remove it in post. Um, but if it's in like the dialogue range, uh, it's more difficult because like the computer kind of lumps it together. <clears throat> um, so that's one thing. And then the other, the other tip is like, if it's a droning sound, it's a lot easier to get rid of. So if it's like a constant hum, like a refrigerator or something. Uh, refrigerator, air conditioner. Yeah, exactly. Like, and there are really good tools now that can usually take that out because it's just like a constant thing. Um, whereas if it's like a, a more dynamic sound that's changing a lot, it's a lot more difficult to pull it out. So a question <clears throat> then. We're in Los Angeles in August shooting an interior house scene. Mm. Yeah. Do we? How much do we stress about the AC? Do we say, "Hey, no, it's better. Let's just leave it on and not kill us all, and just have right. it consistently running, and expect to have to have that get removed later"? Or, right. Or do we kill it and not have to deal with it at all? Like, there's always those weird balances. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> how good is your? It's really like how good is your post sound guy? Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, but your post sound guy. How often is it that you have post sound on set? Like that's is that a thing that can happen? Um, I mean, not usually. So then, how do how do from there? I how do how do I properly yeah. set up the transfer between set sound and post sound to make sure we're. Yeah. Like I think about VFX. You have your VFX supervisor on set making sure it's all going to work for post. That's kind of your job too, right? As the sound to 
Yeah. I, so you're wait, like you're saying a baseline? Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, go. Ahead. Yep. No. Okay. So, um, sorry. I I I I, th- I was I was thinking like in the middle of your question. I don't think I caught the end of it, but um. <clears throat> I would say, like, ideally, if you can, always turn it off. <laughs> like, if you can, right? Like, if if people are suffering and they're sweating, like, turn it on and just, like, it, or leave it on and, like, just hope that <laughs> you have a good post sound guy. Okay, I know yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. a great answer, but, like, no, it's, it's, it's kind of the truth. It, so. Yeah. Um, the truth is like if if it's like if it's like an air conditioner or a refrigerator like there are really good tools now to remove that kind of stuff um it's not it's definitely not ideal and yeah you post- don't want to have to remove it yeah it's rather if it's just clean to begin with yeah yeah um uh i'm trying to think of maybe a tip or something to i'm just trying but, to i'm just trying to also you know as a director it's ideally you're in a position where you trust the team around you Mm -hmm. and also you want to like you're kind of saying too is you you have this nice forethought being that you work post sound to know what assets you're giving future versions the future team that's coming in what they need to do to make this awesome so as a director I want to put my sound mixer, my post sound mix in a good situation. Yeah. Uh, and I want to be collaborating with my sound on the day and making sure that they're not just floating around. Cause it happens with sound people a lot too. Yeah. Nobody cares about sound. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I I would say, yeah, maybe some better tips I could give is like, if you're the, if you're the sound guy, like obviously like always flag that kind of stuff to the AD or, you know, the director, um, and let I mean let them let them listen or even script soup too, yeah or scripts yeah make sure they make a note of that yeah is also important because that yeah for sure um let them know let them uh, put the headphones on them and, and let them listen to how you know loud it is uh ideally as the I mean as the sound guy you always like ideally want to be turning that stuff off if you can but if it's super hot and everybody's going to be you know, if it's going to affect actors' performances, <clears throat> um, then you have to start considering, like, um, you know, can we, can we remove it later? Also, what you what you can do, um, which I did on uh, a set once where we had um, a really loud, super old computer that that could not be turned off. It was in this government building, and... Um, it was a security computer and it was super freaking loud. Like the fans were going crazy on it. And um, it was in, what I ended up doing was just putting, um, uh, what are they called? I, I guess like in sound you call them like baffles, like baffling, which is just like, it's uh, soundproofing stuff. You oh, can put like, soundproofing stuff yeah, like over it. Yeah, like a sound blanket or something. Yeah, or, or just... like a blanket. Yeah. If you have blankets, like you can you can uh, block a lot of sound just with blankets and some tape or like uh, those grips, those little grips that like camera has all the time. You do that a lot with like generators that are outside for you. Like we have to light the scenes. We have a generator going and they put up the C stands and they put the blankets around it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, that helped that, that saved my butt on that shoot because otherwise uh, that sound would have been really, really bad uh, for, for post. Um, So do what you can as the sound guy, uh, <laughs> uh, and just just communicate. You know, communicate to the directors and stuff. And and then, as I guess, as the director, um, if you can get, like you were saying, if you can get your post sound guy talking to your production sound guy, um, have some early looks at some stuff. I mean, that's <clears throat> super ideal. Oh, maybe here's a good tip. <laughs> um, if you can. Bring productions, bring sound in for the walkthroughs. Like, I think that can help. I know that was kind of a running running joke on this latest feature. Our sound guy was named Dennis, and we were like, "Eyes on Dennis, eyes on Dennis." 
even like on our walk through, I'd be like, where'd our sound guy go? <laughs> He's supposed to be here right now. We have questions of this thing. Oh, and he wow. just like would disappear. Oh, really? And then he'd reappear. I'm like, whoa, where'd, where'd you go? <laughs> He's like Batman. Where'd you go, buddy? <laughs> oh, man. He's a squirmy guy. <laughs> Fun dude. Yeah, I, th- I think if you can bring sound in the, in the walkthrough so they can just listen you're gonna have somebody when you're doing the walkthrough. I mean, obviously, you know, you have you bring your DP, and I guess if you need them, right? I don't know. <laughs> right? Yeah. Bring you sound. Know, maybe the DP. Some. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Start with sound. No, but you have your DP there to be, you know, using their eyes, and then you have the sound guy there, just just somebody just to listen um, to the location, how, how the location yeah. sounds. Cause I know I was doing that as the AD on the walkthrough when the sound wasn't there. I'm like, well, we hear this thing. We hear this thing. These fridges, can we turn these off? The locations is with us. So I was like, Hey, or how was this? Yeah. You, whatever you needed to kill. To- we have nothing in that. I'm like, all right, sweet. Thank you. Yeah. If you can, that's really good. Like if you can figure most of it out in pre-production, then you can, uh, yeah, coordinate because, with whoever owns the space yeah, or it always comes up and yeah you just you know you're gonna have to kill all those fridges so have a plan for sound if you can <laughs> great great yes all right um okay i don't know let's talk a little bit about what else do i have for this uh Did you ever see uh, the menu movie? I still haven't seen it, but oh, I really Jesus want to. Christ, yeah. yeah. What are you doing? I know. I have two movies for you to watch. I don't. Okay. Uh, the menu might still be in the. I don't even know if it's still in theaters anymore. Mm. I think it might be. Uh, you will love the menu. What I also think you will love. I just saw this movie. It's called The Whale. Have you seen that mm, one? The Aronofsky movie. Aronofsky, Brendan Fraser. Fraser is how you pronounce his name is <laughs> what really. I learned. Uh, yeah, because there are some epic eating scenes in that movie. Oh. And I'm like, this is right up Amir's alley right here. Wow. And, yeah. But it's it's tonally, of course, unlike anything that you're currently making. Mm. It's not dark. It's just very sad. Yeah. Like, yeah, a lot of his movies are. I'd, I really love his movies. So I would recommend seeing The Whale. Cool. Yeah, I I definitely need to watch that and The Menu. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, they're both going to be leaving theaters soon. The Whale is such a small movie. It's not staying around long. But that one, whoo, I think I cried like three or four times. That oh, movie. wow. It was so good. Yeah, he knows how to get you, man. Aronofsky. Oh, that was so good. All right, I don't want to hype it too much. Uh, that's not a question, but a thing. Um, okay, so this is maybe we'll end on this. I'll say. I was I was digging through. I guess I haven't scrolled that far down on your Instagram before, but I just went and looked. I'm not going to talk about the longer hair and what and that whole transition, because <laughs> you know I've been there too. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. But I, what I do want to ask about is, you kind of hinted at it a little bit. You did have a food short film project prior. It's called Love Swing, mm. Love Swings. Oh yeah. Um, and this one, I saw some of your flyer posts. You're like, this is a free event. I'm making pizza, and I have the short film playing. Oh yeah. And now you're prepping three short films for a little bit more of a, a more extensive experience with more lavish meal. I don't know if lavish is the right word. More involved. I don't know. I know yeah. nothing about the short film or how pizza is intertwined with that story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you can talk a little bit about that. But the question yeah. being that we never really got to your origins, you did tease a little bit, but what, what, you kind of answered this question. I'm just, I guess the question was going to be this combo, but you did talk about the combo of why, why the food is connected to film. But hmm. um, I don't know. That's, I answered this on it. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's no question. Tell me about the okay. short and the pizza. Yeah. Oh, okay. so, yeah. So that was one. Um, and how'd that go? I think that was my the second short I ever did. And it was like, uh, I basically just kind of forced my 
my friend <laughs> to go to this park with me and just be I was like, okay, we're going to shoot it on this swing here. And um, I had bought a slice of pizza. I, I wrote like a quick script. I was like, okay, break, break up with a, break up with a girl. Like talk like you're breaking up, and it was just a, a single on him the whole time, right? And um, what? I said, uh huh, yeah, I yeah, see where it's going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know, so uh, he, he's breaking up with this girl, and then in the end of it, it pans to the girl, and it's just a slice of pizza in a swing, in a swing. So he was just breaking up with the slice of pizza the whole time, and um, so that yeah, that was that one. And, and so then you wanted like, people to eat pizza to while they were watching. Yeah, it. yeah. Is that a little <laughs> bit spoily, spoily? Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of being so vague with my descriptions. <laughs> no, it's all good. Okay, no, that's cool. I've never seen that one. Um, yeah. It's all right. I was thinking, well, you know, you mentioned on an early short, just you and a buddy. It's, you know, it's, it's yeah. how it goes. Uh, all right. I guess since that question fell flat, apologies to myself and to you. Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, I will buy some time with saying that I think, which short? I'm thinking about my, because Gianna Carly starred in Your Hungry short. Hmm. Yeah. She starred in a short of mine where her wish was... She wanted spaghetti and meatballs or something <laughs> was her was her wish, and the genie. Cause, yeah, I have a genie in mind too. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah re- that's the re- Jenny one, right? Yeah, me, me a Jenny, Jenny, and also me. Yeah, yeah. So I like that one. So yeah, she she asked the genie. Well, she wishes out loud. I wish I had just some spaghetti or whatever, mm. and the genie pops up and sends her on this wild adventure. And then the last sh- the genie grants her the. On it, the the wish eventually as a surprise, and she washes up on the beach, and she looks, and you reveal the. I don't have a pan like you had the pan to the pizza. <laughs> Mine's just a cut to the nice tray with the spaghetti, spaghetti on balls. It. Oh, nice man! Me. I'll have to watch that one again. I, I really like the cinematography. I remember the cinematography, and that yeah, one's that really one's nice great. on the that, beach. That one, I messed up on sound bad on that one. I borrowed oh. Mark, Mark's. Uh, oh, his gear, kit, and I didn't set it up right there was like something messed up with one of the wires and i couldn't fix it and then half of like the whole day of shooting was no good and we had an adr like a whole exterior scene between two characters oh man so whenever i watch i'm like this is all adr and i can't watch this but like mark (laughs) helped with squeezing the dialogue in and okay finessing it but i'm just like oh Mm. that's such a bummer (laughs) me trying to it looks great though (laughs) it looks great um okay Lastly, last, well, not lastly, 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 but I'm just curious to hear about, you mentioned it's difficult to, with the ambition of hosting an event where people are eating food while they're watching a movie, you want both things to be good. Yes. You've, you've put a lot of work and time into developing your skill set as a filmmaker, and this is going to be the latest showcase. And you're going through and putting more work into it to make sure it's where you want it to be. Now... Can you tell us a little bit about the opposite end of what you did to prep for the food? Like, did you did you come up working in kitchens or what? Uh, just mm. so we know when we're showing up to your event yeah. in a couple months for Valentine's Day or whatever, however you're going to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah <laughs> we just want to know if the food's going to be good. We want to be anticipating it and we're very excited. So if you want to cool. fill us in on that journey. Yeah. Um, so my food journey... I guess. Well, that's started. Um, uh, my dad is from uh, Kar- Karachi. Point the what? What's that? There you go. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sam out. <laughs> uh, so my dad's from Karachi, Pakistan. Um, so I grew up, uh, and he was a uh, 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 ran a restaurant, um, <clears throat> and uh, really great cook. Uh, so that was kind of my first where I first started like falling in love with food. Um, you know, just observing him and eating his food and eating all his, you know, curries and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, when I was uh, I was working a job that I didn't really like very much, so I was like, "Hey, you know what? I'm <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna quit this job and just go to culinary school and just say 
you know, screw it. And just, uh, you know, it, it was just like a, a desk job. It was really boring. So anyway, I, I did that and I went to culinary school and, um, uh, yeah. So I went to culinary school and I started working at restaurants for a little bit. Um, a few years I worked at like, I don't know, Taiwanese restaurant in Chinatown. I worked at like some gastro pubs. Yeah, how know. extensive was the culinary school? Like two years, three years? Yeah, it was a two years? year program. <laughs> yeah. It was two years? Two year program. Um, and yeah. And then I got, uh, there was a chef that came in. He was a, a uh, friend of my my teacher and he basically just like recruited me uh and uh yeah so I started working at his restaurant for a little bit and um did that for a few years and um I had like my own little food businesses that I would I would sell breakfast burritos and like shit like that <laughs> just like how does that tamales work? and like what's up? you mean where would you how does that how does that work? It's funny. I used to sell it at at the job that I used to work, like the you job that I had left. On the, oh, you go back to your desk job space? Yeah. And okay. I would just like, not I would at, take. Not, not I, at the restaurant job where you're. <laughs> no, not at the restaurant. I would go. Yeah. I would uh, take orders, my old coworkers and stuff. And uh, I would just go and deliver all the burritos or tamales and stuff like that. A morning bag or whatever. Yeah. Super cool. And then I just always did like little pop-up restaurants. I had like uh, some little pop-ups I did just out of my apartment in Hollywood a few times. Um, The flyers are probably on my Instagram still for a bunch of those. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I I really love to cook. Uh, I, the restaurant industry wasn't like, wasn't, I don't know, really for me, but like, uh, um, I, yeah, I don't know. I still is, it, is it more like, like, okay, I was, for some reason my brain went to sports mm. and I was thinking about like growing up, it was really lovely playing football with my friends at the park. Mm. But once I got onto a football team in high school, it just wasn't fun anymore. And I didn't, oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't like like it's the fun part is like none of us know what we're doing and we're just winging it on the fly and we're just like this is this is the fun part yeah making the plays and practicing throws and rounds that's like boring mm. so is it similar to, was is that how it was with cooking like it's it, mm. the love of making would, stuff is fun but doing um, it for work kills the fun no it oh. wasn't that um it was more like it it was more like I think I just worked at a couple of restaurants that just had like a lot of people that I didn't really get along with. Oh, just the relationships at work. Yeah. Um, and just kind of the, yeah, it was just like a, not a, a work environment that really gelled with my personality. Um, so I, I hear kitchens can be loud. Yeah. Really loud. And like, I don't know, to be honest, like there's just like a bunch of us. <laughs> I worked with a bunch of jerks. <laughs> um, and I'm sure not every restaurant's like that, but um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and not everyone I worked with was a jerk, but you know, the, there were people that I I just didn't really get along sure. with. Sure, no, it's a good reason to leave a, a job, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it's like and, fun energy. Yeah, and it was like, uh, so I still, I always loved cooking still and even... I don't know. Making the other thing about cooking too is like you just it's all about like volume. So like in order to make like money off of it, you have to like crank out a lot of volume. So it's like uh I I guess maybe that was the other part of it. I was like I I came to the point where it's like I would love to just like, you know, maybe collaborate with some chefs or something or you know what I mean? Like uh maybe like work on maybe come up with like the menus with somebody and um and then hire some people to to actually do like the production like help with the production or something it's a lot to do by yourself like just to make food for like a ton of people um yeah and also to make the movies and <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah yeah to split up the just to kind of like split up the responsibilities or something um I don't know if that makes any sense what I just said, but to me that doesn't. <clears throat> I don't. I'm not too familiar with the process, but yeah. So you have to bring in. You just need. It's a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of plates to fill. It's a lot of 
for like, stuff to prep you need it's like there's a line there's a process to it yeah like I, I i i love cooking and i also love making movies but it's hard to do both and like make a make it like a career out of it or something just because like let's say i threw a dinner event and i had like you know 50 people show up or something it's like i don't know it, it's hard to cook food for 50 people by like you need help yeah you know? so you're so okay so you're is the are you <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the event that you're planning on throwing is i'm assuming is it going to be are you going to pull in a team that can feed 50 people or are you capping it at what you are able to do yeah i th- I think i'm gonna see i'm I'm gonna maybe do like a pre-sale and see like how m- many people are interested and then kind of go from there if i need to like hire a couple people like i'll do it say hey bo and maddie <laughs> I'm just kidding. yeah you know what actually i was just thinking of is alex cooks uh alex nishino oh he's a chef yeah or he cooks I think, yeah, he's like a professional. Perfect. Chef, it's yeah. called immersive. He can be serving out the... Well, if he's in the kitchen, <laughs> it doesn't quite. And by the way, everybody, this guy you just watched, he's in the back making your food. Yeah, right? Woo! He wants right. to... <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh huh. So, is there any tease you can give us on... Do you know the recipes yet? Is there any... Mm. Can you... Can you... What's the term? Not like... Something with our palate, not like it's not the cleanser palate. No. Oh, like not appetize, but some, teas some, like something like that. Um, not wet our palate. That's not. The oh way. yeah, yeah, wet your palate okay. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, <clears throat> it's going to be three courses, uh, one for each short, and um, it's they're all Pakistani dishes, uh, and one of them is a curry. One of them. <laughs> so basically, it, it's an appetizer, it's an entree, and a dessert. Yeah, and I'm assuming I don't. Okay, I don't want to spoil the entrees. If what you receive is meant to be a surprise, mm. I don't know if that's an element of the piece, an yeah. element of the experiences. Like you don't it quite is. know what's coming to your table. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. So there's a curry, <laughs> <laughs> but a mystery curry. <laughs> Well, that's great. Okay. Well, I don't know, man. Uh, I had a thought mm. somewhere. I had a great thought. I forgot what it was. Mm. Maybe it'll come back. <sighs> nope. <laughs> nope. Well, um, I would say it's lovely to be in 2023. Mm. We're not there yet, but we are there. When, yeah, we're essentially there. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I just, um, I'm very excited about getting this project out, and and then I don't know. I'm always, <laughs> and then what's whatever's next on the horizon. Yeah, to look to that. Yeah, a lot of... uh, I have some ideas about that, but we won't go into it. (laughs) Great, great. And we'll talk more later. Okay, well, with that being said, I feel like that's a a good ending. Keep... Oh, the last, last question. I'm assuming you'll be posting stuff about stuff. Where can Mm. people follow you keep yeah. up with like all right well i might be you know i might want to come check this thing out how do you, where are you gonna yeah how do people yeah. keep up um <clears throat> instagram is probably the best place right now uh you f- find me at um i'm, I'm sure you put it in the it'll be thing. somewhere but okay. also saying out loud is good too yeah oh yeah it's amir james aftab is my instagram uh tag and uh yeah, if you, uh, follow me on there. If you're interested at all in the restaurant event, you know, feel free to shoot me a message or something. And um, yeah, so give me a follow or <clears throat> um, yes, follow Amir. He will yeah. post about the event. Yes, and more. Okay, just keep up with the journey. You're gonna be doing plenty of cool stuff, I'm sure. Yes, <sighs> definitely got a vibe, but I'm sure you'll keep it up. Yeah. Unless you plan on mixing it up and going completely just like romance on your next one or something. No, <laughs> no darkness whatsoever. 
Might mm. and love. <laughs> you know what's really funny is no, I won't give anything away, but <clears throat> well, I don't know. Should I talk about it? Sure. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm. I'm actually. I, maybe I shouldn't. Okay, you're not. But but but, but I will say it's it's really funny that you brought up romance because I am writing like a romance thing, but it's like not really. A... I'm sure. I'm sure it is. <clears throat> It starts as a romance. Yeah, and it turns. Yeah. Sounds a lot like... I'm just kidding. Audition? <laughs> <laughs> like your other short. Hungry. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Which started out as a romance. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Super cute. Quirky romance. Uh, All right, well, with that being said, uh, yeah, make sure you like the... I don't know, how, what, how do podcasts work? I keep forgetting. This is episode 79. I don't know how to outro yet. Mm. Leave a leave a follow the podcast, like the podcast, leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube. And uh yeah, that helps the show. So yeah, thanks again for 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 chatting, mister. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah. All right. Well, bye everybody. Bum, 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 bum.